Good evening. Good to be with you. I'm Don Hudson. Welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the big seven stories right now. And topping the list is something that's active at this very moment, a fire at a Knoxville apartment complex. We're getting a live look at the fire department's response. We understand KFD on the scene of that working fire, 2400 block of Piedmont Street. Now that is in West Knoxville. We do have a reporter photographer there on the scene to gather more information for us. Firefighters did send us some photos earlier as well when it was fully going on. As you can see right here, these pictures of the KFD fighting that blaze. Again, a small apartment complex uh, taking fire tonight and the fire department getting there. Now our crews also sent some more video. This is the road there in that area. There are people are being kind of blocked off. We did, I did just hear the reporter talking about being blocked off, couldn't get down that road very far. Uh, but they did send these videos, clearly a lot of damage to this small apartment complex on Piedmont. We will have more on the firefighter effort uh, tonight coming your way uh, at 11 o'clock as well. In the meantime, moving on, next on our list at 7, a big turn in a shocking murder case. A judge this morning deciding to release the name of a 15-year-old boy accused in the killing of a 13-year-old girl. Now, we were in the Knox County Juvenile Court System this morning and at that court for the hearing of Malachi Lamar Harris. The judge, Tim Irwin, heard from the state and from the boy's lawyer before deciding to make Harris's name public. While we were there, we also got our hands on a juvenile petition offering up more details about what happened. The paperwork shows Harris is accused of stabbing the victim several times with a pocket knife. The victim's body was found on a trail near the Broadacre subdivision in Powell, just north of West Emory Road, not too far from Powell High School and Powell Middle School. More claims in the petition that Harris and the girl met up around midnight, then Harris allegedly left without telling anyone, and the girl's body was found later in the day. It hasn't been determined if Harris will be charged as an adult or as a, a juvenile. Six News legal analyst Greg Isaac says a violent act can complicate the mission of the juvenile court system. Committed in an aggressive or premeditated manner. Um, whether the, the juvenile has a prior disciplinary record and whether it would be in the best interest of the community. You balance whether uh, the child can be rehabilitated, whether, whether there are uh, psychological uh, counseling services available uh, that would weigh against transfer. Now, Harris is going to be back in court, we are told, again on Tuesday. That will be for a status hearing. The victim has not been identified, but the community in Powell is showing support for her and her family, including different ways, but also setting up a makeshift memorial near the trail where her body was found. Well, our list rolls on with a deadly crash. In addition to taking a life, it injured another person, led to major backups as well, with the entire northbound side of Interstate 75 closed for almost two hours. The crash was reported about 11 this morning. I-75 reopened at 1.30. Six News has reached out to the Sheriff's Office for more information. We'll keep you updated as we learn more, but clearly a very violent crash there. Here's a look at, our, uh, T at the TDOT Smartway camera network out there. No problems to report in that area right now. At least not, no problems that are slowing down traffic, that's for sure. All right, Knox County's first ever sensory room opened for students at Pleasant Ridge Elementary School today. The room, which took about a year to develop, was funded by a $35,000 grant donation from the Blue Care Tennessee. Sensory rooms are designed to promote cognitive development, social skills, and enhance communication and learning. And as Principal Jennifer Morrell tells us, the need for these rooms is increasing. Over time, our society has changed, and especially all the changes that we've seen in students after the pandemic. Um, their students haven't had as many experiences playing with other children, socializing. Um, our world has just changed somewhat, and I think a room like this gives us the opportunity to really address all the needs that students have, because um, if I can't regulate my emotions, then I'm not ready to learn. Pleasant Ridge was one of three Tennessee schools to receive the grant, and because it creates a calming environment for students and really for staff, they say it also promotes better learning. New information to pass on on our Big 7 list tonight. We're learning when a collapsed train trestle in Newport could reopen, just shedding some light, by the way, on nearby roads and when they could also open. The trestle runs parallel to East Broadway Street, and some roads run underneath it, which is why they're closed right now. 
Norfolk uh, Southern tells 6 News that it has a team on site assessing that situation. Now, we're told the trestle has been out of service since Helene hit, and right now the railroad expects it to reopen at the end of January. We first told you about the collapse yesterday on 6 News. River Road at East Broadway, Jimtown Road at East Broadway, Liberty Alley at East Broadway, and River Road are all closed until further notice. The state releasing its latest county-by-county -county unemployment numbers is our next story. Knox County September unemployment rate was 3.1%, but here in East Tennessee, Sevier County had the lowest September unemployment rate at 2.7%, which of course is low, but actually slightly higher than it was in August. And in our area, the county with the highest unemployment rate last month was McMinn County. That rate, 5%. Or real close to it, I should say. A step toward improving McMinn County's unemployment rate today as well. The state announcing that 200 new jobs are coming to the Athens area. We're told Denso is investing $100 million to expand its location there, cementing its status as the largest employer in McMinn County. The expansion includes 54,000 square feet of new production space, as well as renovations to existing areas. All right, wrapping up our list tonight. This morning, Knox County Sheriff's deputies attending the grand opening of the new Advance Auto Parts store along Kingston Pike and Farragut. You might be wondering why. Why were the deputies at the auto parts store? Well, the Sheriff's Office was introducing a new program designed to increase roadway safety for local motorists. If they pull you over, you might actually receive a gift card to Advance Auto Parts instead of a ticket. The company partners with local law enforcement each time it hosts a grand opening. We caught up with the assistant chief deputy, Matt Evans, at the new store earlier today. And he says, despite the perceptions, despite the TV shows and movies, most deputies really don't want to hand out a ticket. It's usually the last thing an officer wants to do. I mean, we understand that uh, it can be a financial burden uh, at the very least when somebody receives a, a citation. So the main thing we want to do is try to correct the problem and bring it to their attention or correct the behavior. So this is, this is a great opportunity. Officers realize a lot of times people with an equipment violation don't even know they have one. So the officer pulls them over, uh, makes them aware of it. And now, the assistant chief, Deputy Evans there, says now they can turn kind of that awkward, maybe even a little bit scary moment pulling someone over and have everyone leaving with a smile because many of us have probably been through that.